Kanye talks about the main ingredient being hugely inspirational. I never knew that. Uh, the Pete Rock joint. Because that's that album is one of the reasons that I do why I do what I do. I never knew that about I him. I find this is what I find, Jess, and I want to ask you about this because I find that MCs like Mecca and the Soul Brother, producers like Main Ingredient. Mecca and the Soul Brother is cool. <laughs> Respect, respectfully. Respectfully, Mecca right. and the Soul Brother is cool. Um, and I'm saying that jokingly with love. Yes, like, I, I know what you mean. But like, there have been times, like I remember one night we had a battle royale at Baseline. Are those records? I don't remember who else was there. I remember Len was there, Lenny mm-hmm. S. Shout out to Lenny S. Mm-hmm. But it was like a mob of us. And I'm like the one dude dying on the main ingredient hill. The main ingredient. So I went and got the the iPod or the CDs or whatever and played both of them back to back, key song for key song. And by the time I was done with my dissertation, nobody could argue with nobody me. Nobody could argue. <laughs> so, so this question I asked you, you you got the data. You're not just answering... Like oh. you're like no, I've done a scientific study. Yeah, no, like no, we can we can break this down. Like, <laughs> like you went to grad school for this shit. <laughs> you know, cause you know what's funny about, about that album. You know, because it wasn't hugely successful, right? Mm-hmm. At this point, I'm not just a fan anymore. Like I'm the aspiring producer. I'm a working DJ, so I'm not catching albums necessarily right mm-hmm. when they come out. What was that like? Ninety five, I think mm-hmm. maybe. So I was late to the album. I had the singles. I was late to the album. And one of the homies um, used to work at a record shop right near campus at Rutgers. And I would come, shout out to Derek, rest in peace. I would come through and he would literally just mark, and no matter what I was buying, he would mark it down to a dollar. Mm. So it could be a double album, whatever. So I would just go there every day and just rack up $100 I'm walking out with 100, 100 records. Yeah. So I finally, I realized I had never gotten the second, the main ingredient. Copped it. And... Um, it quite literally, as a produ- as a young producer, changed my life probably more so than any other body of work from that era. I think what was happening there was CL Smooth has a very specific rhyme style. Right. That, you know, it's 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 a thing that he's doing. And it comes from CL Smooth was like Marion. Clark Kent talked about how when Rock Kim came out, it changed from like rap into rhyming. Mm-hmm. It's like dudes rhyme like this, and then it became a different style. Right. I feel like CL Smooth style is right on, is right in between there. Like he right. still got this old school thing happening, mm-hmm. but he's rhyming on these new age at that time. New age production, beats, yes, right. And it's like this marriage of it's still what one foot in what we know rap to be, but now it's like the future right. and. CL, his name was his last name was Smooth. Right. So I think he fashioned himself. He saw himself as a smooth guy. Right. But hip hop was moving more hardcore lyrically. Right. The lyrical subject was moving more hardcore in '95. Pete Rock was stepping up with the beat, so the the he was more refined. Right. On main ingredient, but CL was rhyming basically about women. Right. So I feel like that's what was the disconnect. Right. So but, you're listening to the beats. You know. But, what I'm but see, here's the thing: is to me. I find one of the things that I love, and I talk about this in interviews all the time, is unorthodox juxtapositions. It's one of the reasons why I like a record like It Ain't Hard to Tell is my favorite song of all time. Mm -hmm. Because you have this beautiful Michael Jackson, and what's his name from Toto? I can't remember his name part um, off the top of my head, but this beautiful arrangement. Super duper pretty, but then you had the super hard boom, boom, cat, boom, boom. They shouldn't work together, right? But they do. And then you have Nas talking what he's talking on mm-hmm. it. It's just these to me that the, what some people would. I don't. Well, I don't think anybody would call that record a disconnect. But when I look at it from a technical standpoint, it's very disconnected. Mm. But it all works somehow. So to me, going to your point about with, with what CL was talking about, it might have been disconnected from the content that was becoming popular at mm-hmm. that time. But to me, I love the fact that you had these hard, technically advanced beats, but he was in a whole different pocket than what you would normally mm. expect. To me, that's one of the things that made it beautiful. Yeah. Um, I kind of liken these two albums to the Dynasty and the Blueprint, or the Reason and the Blueprint. What we started to kind of figure out between the dynasty and the reason is what we nailed on the blueprint. Right. And I told Pete this. I said, what y'all were starting to figure out on Mecca and the Soul Brother, and I think all sold out was the EP. The EP, I'm not yeah. Mistaken. Y'all finally nailed it, or Pete finally nailed it on the main ingredient. Like, you heard hints of what was going to come, and it, they finally nailed it on the main ingredient. Which 
on your Jump, 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 jump. What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party When opportunity jump, knock it Then young nigga move that dough Whoa, Get your foot stuck get it Call me young, go get it They can't fuck with it My slow roll with it What's the world with it?